the first time I ever, um, I mean, I had heard of Moose Brown, obviously. Who hasn't, right? I mean, you know. Much of the world. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had heard about Moose, and um, I got a message on Facebook. Um, this has been like three years ago, almost four years ago, in mm -hmm. fact. Um, I guess it has been, yeah. Anyway, um, but I got a message from him, and uh, he just said, hey, you know, what are you doing? What's what's the deal? And, I mean, run with it. You you were the one that reached out. <laughs> Tell him. Well, you, you came on my radar sometime in the middle of 2017. I saw a video of you singing, and I thought, who is that? I was blown away with your voice, and then I heard you talking. It was like it was obvious that you were had an easygoing, sweet personality, and I just thought... Why is this person? Why I've never I've never heard of this person, and so I reached out to you on Facebook because there's been several times where I've gotten a nice message from somebody. They'll say, "Hey, I just I, I think uh, I enjoy what you do," you know, and it just yeah. makes me it made me feel good. And so that was basically what I wanted to do is just say, "Hey, I just you know I don't know who you are or what you got going on, but I just I really am a fan. I and uh, I'd love to work together sometime yeah. in some capacity, even if it's writing and. Uh, you, we spoke, and you let me know pretty quickly that you were not a songwriter, mm -mm. and that was not for you. You mm -mm. tried it years and years before, and it didn't enjoy the process. And I said, "Oh, okay." So uh, three years went by, and I had done a record on Mo Pitney, and you reached out to me to tell me that you enjoyed it, and blah blah blah. And uh, I said, "Well, you know, thank you. That means a lot coming from you." And the offer still stands. And you took me up on it. Yeah. It, in the meantime, over all of this, it was crazy because, I mean, obviously, twenty twenty was life altering for everybody because everything changed, and we all had time to reassess our life. Um, and I think with me, um, I was sort of at a point where I wasn't really sure what was going to happen next, anyway. And then when twenty twenty happened. You know, when things get quiet, you don't have any other choice but to think about what's going on. Mm -hmm. And it's also, for me, gave me a really clear way to hear from God telling me what the next step was going to be. Because I think I'd been busy and trying to figure it out on my own for so long. And then when there was nothing happening, it was like... And I remember this was maybe the last week of July. I remember hearing God's voice say, you need to start writing. And I was like what? I don't write. I'm not a songwriter. That's not what I do. I don't, I've tried that. It's not my thing, you know. And um, it was just very persistent. That's one thing about God is when you don't do what he tells you to, he will continue to put it in front of you until you finally decide to. I mean, ask Jonah. He knows, like, it's bad. He'll, I didn't, and I felt like, you know, I didn't want to get stuck in a whale. So anyway, <laughs> I thought about it. I thought, well, okay, it, it is whatever. And, um, it was the first week of August. I was buying a birthday gift for my niece, and I was at Opry Mills Mall, and I was in this store, and they, I ran across this journal that was, it was 400 writing prompts. That's what the, the time, and I thought, what is that? So I looked through it, and I thought, well, I think I'll buy that. I'm not a writer. I don't journal. I don't do that kind of thing, but I'd been hearing this thing about you need to start writing. I was like, ah, I don't know what to do with this. So I bought it and took it home, and that night, uh, I think it was like the, maybe the second page or third page of this book. I was looking through it. My husband was, um, Brandon, he was asleep on the love seat. And I was looking through this book and it said, if you were to write a song, of all the things that it would say, it said, if you were to write a song about your significant other, what would the title be and why? And I looked at him and I just thought, gosh, this year has been so nuts. But I can look at him and it feels like it's okay. And I wrote the word easy. In that book, I wow, wrote it under that. That's the first time I'm thing. hearing this. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> and I wrote that. I wrote that down, and um, I kind of stuck it away. In fact, I don't know that I've picked the thing back up. I don't know that I ever picked it back up, but I did. And anyway, so a couple of weeks later is when Mo Pitney's record came out, and um, Moose had produced it. And I got up that morning to go walk. I walked four miles every day. I put on my headphones and I thought I'm gonna listen to that record top to bottom. And I know Mo well enough that as soon as I was, you know, deep into this album, I thought, golly, you talk about really capturing a person. Like, really, like, I know him well enough to know those songs are him. Like, that, you know, and I knew Mo was a writer. He's such a, he's a great writer. He's fantastic. And I thought, man, this is just so cool. So I listened to the whole record. I went inside, 
and I sent Mo a text and I sent Moose a message on Facebook, which we had stayed in touch over the three years since 2017. We were on Facebook together, but we'd never met. We were just Facebook friends. We had mutual friends, whatever. And um, so I sent him a message and just said, man, you really captured Mo. It was great. It was so good. And within like a half an hour, um, I got a response back and that was the response was, you know, thank you. And, and if you ever want to work together, even if it's just writing and the fact that, that that was the wording, even if it's mm. just writing. And I thought, man, and I thought he probably said that because he knew I was going to come back with, well, I don't do that. And then he'd be off the hook. <laughs> like, that's what I thought. <laughs> I thought he'll be, he probably knows I'm going to go, oh, I don't do that. And, um, I messaged him right back and just said, listen, this sounds crazy, but I really feel like I've been being led to start writing again. But I'll tell you, I'm really, really rusty. And I don't, I haven't written in a really long time. And I don't know that I've got anything to offer. Um, and then he responded kind of crazy back. Yeah. <laughs> because I felt the same way. You didn't know it. And I didn't let on. But I literally had not written a song in two years. I had a publishing deal for 16 years. And I stepped away from it in 2016 because I just really got burned out. And and the thought of chasing today's radio didn't appeal to me. I, uh, I, I love all kinds of music, and there's nothing against that, but I, I just, it's not the kind of stuff I write. You know, I don't write about tail, tailgating on a back road. It's just, you know, I'm too old for that stuff. They're not writing that for me anyway. Right. They're writing it for young kids. But, but uh, so I just kind of thought, you know, maybe it's time for me to retire. And I really thought I had retired, at least from songwriting. Uh, I still play on records, and I still produce a little bit, but I thought, eh, I'm probably, I'm probably done songwriting. And so when you and I decided that we were going to try to write something, I reached out to my buddy Don Sampson, who is an incredible yeah. lyricist, because I was scared. I didn't know if I could even write anymore. I hadn't done it in two years, and, and I, I thought, I don't want to bring you into the room, and then I, I can't even do anything, you know? So as fate would have it, as God would have it, uh, Don uh, had a strange event where he he had uh, his calendar was wrong and he he thought he could be there and last minute he said I can't be there so we were th forced to write that first day together yeah. and we wrote easy and it, and it was easy it was yeah and I think that was what was really unbelievable to me was we had never met face to face we'd never met at that point mm -mm. Um, we had seen each other at a distance at a restaurant once but both of us were like I think that's them but we yeah, didn't go and say hey Donovan. I would thought it was Gilbert Donovan <laughs> and I was so starstruck how could I <laughs> went up and said anything but um, we had never met in person and I and we came out uh, right here to this very room and um, just kind of got to know each other. We talked for about an hour or so, just kind of like, so what's your story? Where are you from? What's the deal? You know, how's it going? And and uh, we sat down, and, and you asked me, you're like, what do you want to write about? And I was like, oh. And I, you know, I thought I didn't even really think that far ahead. And I said, easy. That was where that came. Like, I mm -hmm. was like, easy. Because I think a lot of people could feel that way, that, you know, when everything else is is just has been so crazy the last few months the last year whatever you know there there are those safe places that you can go and and um, so anyway we sat down and it really poured out of both of us you sit yeah. down behind your piano your keyboard yeah. and and it was just like there and i was like that's the song yeah. like i like i and, and i and we started just coming up with these lyrics and and it was it was so it was so very easy and there were even there's I know one line in particular in that song that I know it didn't come from me I know it came straight down and out of my mouth but it didn't come from me and I thought I don't even think like that wow like that was you know and um, I, I, I've been in love with that song ever since and I, I just I can't wait for people to hear it because it's it's me getting being able to finally tell a, my own story.